welcome to Hello Nigeria. My name is Olive Emody, and today I'm very excited, delighted, and honored to interview someone I consider one of Africa's biggest exports. Well, you might not say that now, but I promise you that in the nearest future, you'll get to see that this man is indeed all that and more. He's a talent, he's a gem, he's a singer, songwriter, producer, and recently was signed to the Mavens Record Group. Ladies and gentlemen, I have with me the pleasure of interviewing John Igodalu, popularly known as Johnny Trey. Yeah. <laughs> Good Thank to have you. you, Johnny. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. So your surname is Igodaro or Igodalu? Igodaro. Igodaro. Do you know what that means? Yes, of course. Not everybody <laughs> knows what their surname means. I mean, don't ask me what mine means. I know it. Of course. Not I mean, it means um, I'm looking forward or I'm moving forward. Ah, uh -huh. oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Speaking of moving forward, you have moved forward and your price has gone way up. Thankfully. <laughs> Recently, you did the Johnny's Room concert, Johnny's yeah. Room Live, and Johnny's it was Room amazing. Life. I was there. I had such an amazing time. Thank but you let's for talk about. I saw you. Oh, thank you. I would always come for any show you do. Let's, let's go back to the very beginning. How yeah. did Johnny's Room start? Uh, well, well we, uh, we, we pretty much conceived the whole idea from um, 2016. Um, of course, I always wanted to have my concert, like a concert series. But then I, there was this friend, his name is. Um, there's this friend's name is Scott Timmy Davis, he's a cinematographer. So he came up with an idea of having like a small room where you just have a couple of friends or fans come around and you just sit, s stand around and just vibe, listen to live music, and there's cameras doing all kinds of stuff and all that. So the plan was for 30 people. But as time went on, I got signed to Maven Records, and so it had to be a lot bigger. And then this year, um, well, I think it was pretty much a miracle concert because uh, it didn't look like it was going to happen. But things just kind of fell into place, and we had over 3,000 people. So you had about 3,000 people mm -hmm. at BTS concerts? From 30 to 3,000. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that such an amazing <laughs> multiplication, I must say? Mm -hmm. But let's talk about the, the journey, the process yeah. to making this Journey's Room live that happened at Murio Konla with yeah. about 3,000 people. You mentioned something. You said it almost didn't happen. Yes. People don't get to see what happens behind the scenes, <laughs> the floppy sides, mm -hmm. and all the things that went wrong. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the things that went wrong at Journey's Room live that other people didn't get to see. Uh, well, the, the only thing I, get, I think went wrong <laughs> was that, because <laughs> actually, honestly, everything went like more than went according to plan. Uh, so things just kind of fell, fell into place. And I think it was God. I don't think it was because we did everything we were meant to do. Um, but I think the only thing I'll probably say what almost went wrong was when I didn't find my second outfit at the middle of, because we took like a break and went backstage. And uh, we had to wait around. The stylist was nowhere to be found. We had to wait for like another 15 <laughs> 15, 20 minutes for him. He was, he was in the key, and then we had to wait. And then we had to use comedians. Thankfully, uh, that's why I, that's why I said things, things, things fell according to plan. Amazing job. Forever it was amazing. And then Kenny Black, which I had yes. no idea he was even going to come, came around, and then he, he did his comedy thing. He just killed time. So Nobody wait, noticed wait, anything. All that time we were waiting, and those comedians were, waiting were performing. For the, we were, waiting we're waiting for, for the stylist. stylist. <laughs> Hi! This <laughs> life is a pot of beans. But I mean, nobody knew. But all he that, came so. eventually. Yeah, he did. He did. Okay. Just in time. All right. Fantastic. Let's talk about your your first reaction. Yeah. When you walked into the place. I cried. I, I cried. Oh. Yeah. How sweet. <laughs> How long did you cry for? <laughs> well, not like cry, cry like. You uh, <laughs> more like I just. Tr I don't. I don't. I don't. I think maybe my tear glands are bad, so I probably didn't tear you up did? or whatever. But, but I cried. Oh. And uh, wh what would you say was the exact or what were some of the factors that moved you to tears first of all i came um first of all before we even went because we did sound check at, at around 2 2 p.m and by 2 p.m people were already coming in like i'd already met like a group of friends like about five of them that just drove in from ibadan um for the concert and even booked like a hotel room to stay over that, that night um so i was already getting it was already warming my heart at that point so by the time i went home after sound check before we even left the venue, like, it was already a lot of people. It was almost like, yo, we can't even sound check anymore because we're giving these guys all their coming to, to experience at the concert already. Um, but by the time I went home and changed and came back, the place was packed full. I, even, I couldn't believe it myself because it was a lot of people. Were you never, did you think you would have that much crowd? In all honesty, did I, you think? Honestly, I didn't. I, I didn't want to, I, I don't like to expect too much and put, put my, like, raise my hopes to it. I'd be like, hey. Uh, 3,700 people registered, so 3,700 people are going to come. Um, but I just, I just wanted to keep an open mind, so I was like, yo, give or take, probably have like 1,000, 1,500 people. And there was a worst case scenario, 2,000. So we arranged for 2,000 um, um, uh, wristbands for people that bought tickets. And of course, that wasn't enough, uh, not, not enough. 
So um, you had this amazing crowd of people. Yeah. You had volunteers. You had people that did mm -hmm. things for you for free mm -hmm. without collecting a dime. Mm -hmm. and Almost every, actually everyone. Everyone did. Yeah. Wow. And we, I, I, <laughs> I remember some of your fans on social media saying, oh, I want to buy four tickets for people. I want to buy mm -hmm. five tickets. I want mm -hmm. to buy 30 tickets. Mm -hmm. You had lots of people sponsoring. Yeah. What would you say it is that is that special thing about you that makes people want to connect to you and just help you without collecting money? Because in this way, God, everybody is looking for <laughs> I know, right? Honestly, I, I don't know. That's why I, I sometimes I just I feel like it's God's grace. I don't think it's because um, my music is, I don't know. It's Your special. music is it's great. Special, no. it's special to, Let's to leave that. People. Your music is special. Uh -huh, it's special yeah. to people. But I also think that it's God's grace that people um, like love Johnny Drill and the music and want to support. I mean, there was a fan. The first fan paid for 30 tickets, and then the other paid for 80 tickets. Um, that's eighty thousand, and they, so it was. It was amazing because people. He could, these guys couldn't come; they couldn't be around. The one was in Ma Manchester, the other was out of the country as well. But they wanted people to experience it, and so it was just. It's just really a hard one. I would say for me that it's your sort of your realness. I think that is what draws fans to you. The fact that you want to act like I feel that next door. <laughs> well, yeah, but the I'm truth is, we know that you're a celebrity. <laughs> and your price has gone way up. You know, your your level has Amen. has gone Amen. up, but. Amen. How are you? How are you able to manage that? There's a societal expectation of celebrities. Yeah. You know, there are certain ways you should act. There are certain ways you should carry yourself. But we find that you don't seem to be the conventional celebrity. You don't allow those rules <laughs> to hold you down. How are you able to draw the thin line and find the balance? Um, I mean, the, the way I look at it, um, I mean, I've met a lot of celebrities, and one thing I learned was that. At the end of the day, once they close their doors in their houses, they're just like every other person. They're just everyday people. It's just, I think, I think it's it's public perception or getting out there that make people feel like you need to act a certain way, you need to act like a celeb and all that. But at the end of the day, we're still just everyday human beings. I've been with Cobams. I've been with Mi. First time I met Mi as a partner, he was just that regular. There was nothing. There was no. There was no. There was no star in his head or all Emma that. Mi is the next person that, that I'm glow. going to have a fun moment <laughs> when I get to interview him. I'm warning you guys. Uh, so he was just, he just acted like a, a normal human being. He does that outside as well. So I think everyone is like that. I think it's just public perception that people feel like. But of course, I, I think people, people like to see, people relate more with um, um, things that they, things that they, they experience themselves. So it's, you, you can't start acting all super stylish and, and people just like what they can relate with. So I guess maybe that's why people can relate. With I mean, you do like. some things. You you still enter Okada. Uh, I, I used to, but I, I wish I could now. But I used to do at night when I need at to. Night. When I need to go and get fuel for my gen because it's like a police station. You used to go to the market because I see some of your. Yeah, I used to go to, to the market. To it's just that I have to do all these things and at you night. You wear your hood. <laughs> it's just that most of most of I have to do them at night. Like I know I know my market. The market close to my house. Boom, close on set about nine thirty ten ish. So I still have like from six thirty seven. Which is kind of dark. It's not like if I could go there during the day, I would you go. I would, but it's just public, like I said, public perception. I don't want people to start to say, "Hey, John Drew is so poor. His record label can't can't pay for his blah 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 blah. His and can't he can't whatever." Um, it's not like I can't easily take out Uber or whatever, or drive there and do whatever I want to. But um, so yeah, I have to do most of the time at night because of public perception. Okay, let's talk about your parents. You yeah. had mentioned earlier their fears when you were coming into the entertainment industry, but for purpose of this conversation, maybe yeah. you should share with us what were some of their fears and how <laughs> were you able to calm these fears? Well, my, my parents are pastors. Uh, almost everyone knows that, right? <laughs> uh, both of them are pastors. My, mom, my dad was the only pastor until my mom was, was later ordained. Um, so, yeah, and then I was music director in my, my church. And, you know, church members always come around the house, and it was kind of weird and awkward. That I was always writing and producing, singing love songs, and my dad usually used to study the word, like it's the scriptures. Like there's a room beside my room, and I play, I crank the sound so high and start screaming all that love songs and things my dad wouldn't like to hear, <laughs> especially when he's studying the word. Uh, so of course, those were some of the. At some point, he would come to me and be like, "Yo, why can't you just sing to the Lord? Why can't you just sing?" You know, I just told him, "Daddy, it depends. Like actually, this song, <laughs> I just remove." Baby, and imagine <laughs> that to the Lord. You know? He actually even called me like yesterday morning, yesterday morning to tell me, you know, oh, don't you think it's time you write one song just to appreciate God? Of course, I'm going to. I have songs like that, but he just hasn't heard them. Um, so yeah, those were some of the challenges back then. Um, but over time, they began to support my music, and um, 
and invest, of course, and give me all the support. They still give me all the support now. When they came to that park and they saw over 3,000 people screaming <laughs> your name, what was their reaction? <laughs> By that, see, we, if, we, it was a couple of us in the house. It was myself and Matthew Rhino, the Rhino. Oh, and they are behind the scenes and you get to see them. Oh, of course. <laughs> Uh, my dad, my mom, my dad, my mom, and my brother came to Lagos for the um, con. Oh, of course, I should mention that I flew them in for the first time. I just wanted them to know what that felt like, and um, they were actually very excited about it. Uh, so yeah, we, we, when we go, after the concert and I would go home, it was everyone was excited. Everyone was wow, like it was a lot of people. My dad said, yeah, I didn't see that kind of crowd in his life, and to know that that came, those everyone, everyone that came there for his son it must have been. I made him proud. So he told me, even a week after, he still called me to tell me that, yo, I felt on top of the world that day, especially when you were doing that Papa song. <laughs> oh, uh, so yeah, it was, it was really heartwarming. <laughs> okay, so ladies and gentlemen, the floor is for Johnny Drill and Rhino. And of course, when we wrap up, I'd like the whole team to be here as we say bye-bye to you, all right? But for now, let's hear Hallelujah by Johnny Drill. My producer has decided to wash my dirty linen in public. Like, he even caught me doing the take me pictures. I'm like, bro, bro, why? <laughs> but we hope you enjoyed that interview with Johnny Drew. It was such a refreshing time. And of course, we'll be bringing you part two of that interview next week. So watch out. Johnny's Room coming to you live in Abuja. You can follow him on Instagram at Johnny Drill to find out how you can be a part of it. It's the best investment you can make for yourself this weekend, I promise you. To enjoy more of this, our Ogonke videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.